Okay, so what are we talking about tonight? Realistically, what we're talking about is, I suppose, the bigger picture. That's it in an easy word. Okay, when we talk about the bigger picture, it's really what we do, what the benefits are, and we're going to really talk about doing in person, but remember this translates to you doing virtual events. Also, we're going to talk about finding people continuously and then just a few common mistakes and how to avoid them. The biggest idea with the big picture is what we do impacts others. How we move forward is when it's not about us, when it is about the people that we're talking to, when, and I mean, you know, your potential new customers, your customers and your new associates. Right. So the best thing to think about is where you put your emphasis is where you're going to get your results. So if you start talking to people about what you want to talk about rather than what they want you to talk about, you're not going to get the results you want. So if your focus can always be about who you're trying to connect with, who they are, asking questions of them, listening to what they tell you, you're going to get better results. So you create the environment and you let them decide. And what I mean about that, you know, I'm friends with Bev and Bev says, oh, Sinead, your skin looks amazing. Uh, what's going on? I would probably start a conversation about luminovation. However, Amber Toes might be my favorite project and I might feel compelled to start talking about that. And that's probably not what they're interested in. You have to make it about other people. Okay. So when you think about it, um, I want you to think about how you can get people together. And again, if you're in a location where you feel that you need to do these via Zoom or FaceTime or Messenger or whatever it is, do that. But let them see your face. I've asked a lot of you to put your cameras on tonight for that very reason. It is nice to see people's faces and it really makes the interaction better. Um, so what you want to start doing first is with the idea of it's all about somebody else and um, look around for your potentials of creating get togethers. Right. And when we talk about your biggest potentials, FFW stands for friends, family and W stands for work. They're the, probably the people that you see the most. Who can you talk to? They are what you would call your heart market. How can I connect with them? You know, somebody shared with me earlier um, that they're living in a new area and um, they've got new neighbors they've made friends with so they've invited them around to a get together and they've asked somebody to be their guinea pig for Luminovation again that will be a hot market somebody that's around you you'll see I've said don't sms we live in a world filled with technology people like to hear your voice so your phone when you're busy doing this, also does this. So why not ring them? Why not talk to somebody? Why not strengthen that connection? If you were on uh, a call in early January on a Saturday morning call, um, New Silver Presidential in the US, Ursula Myers talked about business, building her business online. And one of her key tips is she always sets up a phone call. So she may do her Facebook ads or whatever else it is she does, but she sets up a phone call so somebody can hear her voice. It strengthens that connection. If people know who you are and know that you're genuinely interested in them. And the other thing with that is most people are surprised when their phone rings. I don't know about you, but I've got a young nephew and he, he'll be sitting there on his phone. If it's phone rings, he ignores it. Not everybody does that. They're so inundated with messages. If a phone rings and it's a friend, they're going to answer. Um, when you look at your heart market and your friends and your family and your work people, don't bring them all together. Do separate get togethers. Ask them to bring a friend. Ask them to bring a comfort person and, and create events tailored to each of them. And with anybody, ask questions, get clarity about what it is they need or what it is they're interested in and, and, and why they've come to you in the first place. If you can fill those needs, people are going to listen to you and, and connect with you more. Okay. Now, this is really where I want you to get your eyes around. Okay. This is where, again, and I'm, I'm going to just put one thing up. If you're doing something totally different and it's working for you and getting results, don't listen to me. But if you're sitting here because you feel you're stuck, I want you to consider this, all right? 
Your enrolling blueprint starts at the beginning up here. Now, ROA, for those of you that have been connecting with me lately, means result oriented activities. What's a result oriented activity? Something that puts PV in your business and dollars in your pocket. So how many of you in any given day said, I was very busy working on my Manatech business. I watched a video. I read a book. I wished my team a happy birthday. They're great things to help you in your personal development and to build relationships, but are they result oriented activities? Okay. Working with your friends, your families, work colleagues, they're the first port of call and you can extend how you're talking to based on that starting list. I talked to somebody earlier. She told me she was going to go away and work on her list. Did you do your list? Raise your hand if you did. I'm outing you. <laughs> yes, Kelly Abrahamson went and did her list. So what are we all passionate about? The product. And this is why I like to see cameras on. Raise your hands if you'd never be without our product. Who's religious, takes the product every single day and does not deviate? Okay. So leading with the product first should not be hard for you. Let me tell you about, you know, Judy, you said the other day you, were, you weren't feeling great. Um, you were struggling to remember stuff. We've got a great omega-3. You know, women of a certain age start to feel certain effects. Would you like to know about plus? Okay. However, when somebody says to you, Yes, Christy, I would love to buy your skincare, your Amber Toes, your Nutriveris, your superfoods. And you go, I'm ready to get started. I want you to ask every single person a question. Right? And I'm going to emphasize this in the next slide, a question. I want you to say in your own words, not a script, in your own words. Christy, before we get you started, smile, go on, dear, smile. Before we get you started, so I can make sure we're doing it in the best way for you, let me ask you a couple of questions. When you find something that you love, do you tell the whole world? If it's the latest Netflix box series that you're, you're binging or your next best restaurant or your movie or a mascara, do you tell the whole world, do you post on Facebook, will you share? If they say yes, the response is okay. Well, if you share our products, there's an opportunity for you to earn maybe some me money or possibly get your products paid for. Is this something you're open to? Okay. If they say no, you still have a customer. If they say yes, you can have a conversation about creating an associate account. If they say no, they've heard what you've said. And as they learn to love the product, maybe they'll be open to it. But if you ask every single person this question, you're going to increase your chances of duplication. And duplication is finding somebody who wants to do what you do. We are good at finding customers. But the days of beating somebody over the head by saying, would you like to build a business, don't exist anymore, so your words matter. People know what it means to refer. People know what it means to, you know, share on Facebook, who's watching Peaky Blinders or who's watching Succession or who's watching The Crown and everybody talks about it. They share a lot of people out there, bring everybody along for the ride. Not everybody will say yes, but you will increase your chances of succession in duplication if you get into the habit of asking people this question time and time again. And what you're doing is you're giving somebody the opportunity, you're creating the environment and you're letting them decide. Who would like a new business builder in their business? Okay, right? Who's afraid to talk about the business? You're all out, don't, don't you pretend. If you were, if you were not afraid to talk about the business, we'd see more associate enrollments instead of customers. Okay, in this day and age, the words you choose matter if you say okay you want to buy amber toes you want to build a business they're going to tell you bugger off in the nicest way possible so think about what you're saying to somebody and think about how you can present it to them 
Again, I'm not going to tell you that if you talk to 10 people who are ready to sign up, 10 people will say yes. It's very much a numbers game of what we do. But I'm asking you to consider asking this question every single time in your words. There are no scripts here. Somebody once said, can you write that down? And I said, no, because you don't want to sound like me. You want to sound like you. If you sound like a script, you might as well get an AI person to do it for you and nobody's going to buy into that. OK, so I want you to consider every single time. You know, the ability to get your monthly order paid for is a big attraction for most people. You know, we can talk about um, PD and silver PD and platinum PD and 27 star PD, but most people don't look that far ahead. But the ability to have an extra couple of hundred dollars in your account every month matters. There used to be an old statistic that most people in that went bankrupt in Australia was for the lack of two or three hundred dollars. Doesn't sound like a lot of money unless you don't have it. OK. Once you've decided, then you categorize where your person sits. Are they an associate? Are they a preferred customer? Are they on your no list? Or what we call the associate PC work in progress. Yeah. Remember, your group of customers are loving the product. They're likely watching what you're doing. That's possibly where you're going to find your next associate. Right? People don't always listen, but they do watch what you do. They do watch what you post on Facebook. You know, I guarantee you there's half a Karen Dennis's team were all watching her on Sharon's call on Saturday morning. Right? They watch what you're doing more than listen to what you say. So I want you to think about that group of your customers right now. And is there anybody you really haven't heard that could possibly have said to you, oh, I'd love I'd more money, or if I had more money, I'd love to try the Luminovation. Well, maybe there's a conversation starter. And after that, it's how you look after people. Do you onboard people when they join you? You know, do you talk about the product and the possibilities? Do you have a, a leaders only group that you connect with and do training with on a regular basis? Do you have training for all of your group on a regular basis? Or maybe it's your uplines doing it and you pop them into that. And are you keeping them up to date with incentives and compensation and all things related to things they can earn or achieve? Because these are all drivers in your business. Now, I guarantee you, looking at the faces in this call, this ain't new information for most of you. Right? But are you doing it and are you out of the rhythm? I said very early on when I is, you know, Manitech Associates are probably some of the best trained associates out there. There's been a, a, a loss of rhythm in a lot of people's business, and these are the things that are going to help put it back. Okay. So this image I will make available because it's a very good trigger as a reminder of the process to do it. And again, like I said earlier, if you're doing something else and it's working for you, stick with what you're doing. The question, it is important. If nobody knows there's money to be made, how do they know if they want it or they don't? So you're using soft words, you're creating an environment, you're casting a vision for them, and you're letting them decide. Okay. How many people make the decision for their customers before they even realize it? Because they think, okay, I know what they want. You got to ask questions and you got to listen. So every time I look at their list of new enrollments every week, I'd love to know how many people are asking the question. We have reduced joining free for three months. Take advantage. This is your perfect time. All right. Ask the question. Ask the question. Somebody asked you the question. Or they just dragged you in kicking or screaming. I'm sure you'll tell me otherwise. But somebody asked you the question. And you saw what they saw and you said yes. Okay. So there's a few key, key principles on this, right? Our business is predicated on a lot of people doing a little and a few people doing a lot. Not everybody in your business wants to be presidential. A lot of people like to come in, earn enough money maybe to pay for their products or some other item they need in their life, whether it's, you know, um, affording swimming lessons for the kids or uh, affording to be able to put money away every month for a holiday at the end of the year, whatever it is. Just remember, not everybody has the same goals. I think this, this is not, people are unintentionally unreliable. 
Yes, yes, of course. Yes, yes, I'll turn up to your call. Yes, I'll meet you for coffee and they never show up. Expect that. Make it easy for people when you're connecting. Meet people where they're at. You know, don't make somebody drive four hours to see you. If you can, if they say to you, I've got a yoga class at six o'clock. Oh, there's a coffee shop next door. I'll meet you afterwards. Meet people where they are. Um, I'll go back to the person who made their list. Business is a strategic numbers game. You know, do the numbers. You you know how you can achieve things. You know, I was talking with Kelly Abrahamson earlier. She's the queen of working out incentives. She knows it's a numbers game. Okay, if you have a goal to hit Silver Director, you know you're going to need to bring in a certain amount of people and you're going to get a need to get a certain amount of people duplicating. Do the numbers. If you're not sure, work with your upline. They will help you. Be duplicatable. There's a lot of people on this call that know more about the products than Dr. Nugent. Doesn't mean you need to tell everybody that comes away everything you know, because all of a sudden that seems hard. You need to make it look easy and you need to make it look fun. If you're having an in-house get together, if Chris Pitcher has said, yes, I'll come to my house. If it takes me four hours to set up and I look like I'm stressed and have been dragged through a hedge backwards, she's going to think that's hard. Less is more everybody less is more and um, a friendly approach your words matter make it fun make it light make it easy and then ask qualifying questions so when we talk about continuously uh finding people okay so pauline hancock has said yes to me and I say, okay, Pauline, you're going to get started on Luminovation. You're going to be glowing in a month's time. You're going to love me forever for introducing you to this product. Do you know anybody that would be interested in this product? Or oh, we've just done a little get together at, at the coffee club. And you brought three friends. Would any of you like to do your own separate get together? This is how you get continuity. You're always adding to your list. Honest answer co time when's the last time you wrote a list and when's the last time you added new names to your list if you're not doing that these are old school things to do and if you're up with the technology do it on your ipad do it on your phone set it up in the sky like a bat signal no matter what way you want to do it find a way that works for you because these are the things that will keep you in a position where you have somebody to talk to how many times have we asked or said to ourselves, I've no one to talk to. I've nobody on my list. I've talked to everybody I know. Um, I call BS on that because I guarantee you, no, you haven't. You just need to maybe do some memory jogging and think about where you go, who you connect with and who you can ask for referrals. Mm -hmm. Pauline, you're loving Luminovation. You're looking better than you have in years. Again, who of your friends do you think would be interested? You know, is there anybody we can connect in and maybe you get some referrals from this? Helping your people that have come on board will help your business. And again, just be keep it light and simple because if they don't understand it, they're going to fear it and think it's hard. Make it easy. Mm -hmm. Anybody on this call ever vomit too much information on someone? Yes. Yes, absolutely. And those of you with your heads down are going, yeah, but I'm not going to tell her. I know it's okay. I've seen some of you do it. You forget. I've been in lots of meetings with most of you. I've seen it. Okay, yes, I will tell you the 47 million ingredients in Amber Toes backwards. Less is more. If somebody wants more information, you can always send them more. But if you've given them too much, you can't take it back. Okay, you need to believe in yourself. So you know what to do. You've got some key points. You've got to have some belief in yourself and in what you're doing. Okay, hands up. We all love the products. Okay, don't all rush with the hands up. Come on. I'm not asking you to jump a hurdle. We all believe in the products. Okay. We're all happy to share about the products. Do you believe in the business? Okay. 
Yeah. Belief in the business is just as important. You can ask somebody to do something you're not doing yourself or that you're not committed and, and, and tied into. You also need to set goals. Who at the start of the year watched Al Bala's uh, goal setting sessions? Did we all set goals? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, Some, a couple of people kind of go, mm, no. Christy Seth, well, I'm looking at you. I don't know if that's a yes or a no, but it's okay. It's pick on Christy Light. It's okay. Everybody gets a turn. It's fine. Um, I haven't started on Robin Solly yet, even though the name says kind of. Um, my point is set a goal. you got to know where you're going. you got to know what you're trying to do. And there's personal goals and there's business goals. Okay. Things that you need to do to accomplish them. Lists, 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 lists. My potentials list, my no list, my follow up list, my new customers. It gives you a roadmap of what to do. It gives you a roadmap of what to do. Again, I'm not, this is not rocket science. You guys all know this. All right. And it is, you've heard me talk about time blocking. There's only so many hours in a day. You can't make 28 hours in a day, it's 24. How many hours a week are you going to commit to your business? And when you decide that number, maybe it's five, maybe it's 10, maybe it's one. It's whatever you do. But is that time being filled with result oriented activities, which means it's going to put PV in your business and dollars in your pocket? Anybody want more money in their, their out of their business? Absolutely. What you do with it is your business. You can buy the shoes if you want the shoes, but you know what? I always find in it's I don't know whether it's just our industry. A lot of people do a lot of giving back with the money they earn. But it's up to you what you do with it. There is absolutely no judgment. I like to buy the shoes. Um, so you have to ask yourself, are you connecting with people or are you disturbing people? I've met some of you. You've been disturbing to me, but it doesn't mean you're disturbing to everybody else. Okay. It's not what you say. You again, not rocket science. It's how you make people feel. It's how you make people feel. I've been in some of your homes and I know how it's made me feel. Robin Sully, I've had lunch in your house. What a warm, welcoming place to be. I've been in Bundaberg with Bev Walker. He's gone missing on me. What a wonderful place to be. It's how we make people feel. Okay. I want you to think about that. How are you making people feel? Again, it ain't about you. It's about them. Okay. And you got to resonate with people. Right. So you've got to be listening to what they're telling you. And you've got to be asking the right questions. And very much as I can do that. Or I could never do that. I did a post during the week and it's one of the things I love. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, either way you're right. You decide, it starts and ends with you. It's not about you, but it starts and ends with you. So if you say, I can't do that, well, you can't because you're never going to. Somebody said to me earlier today, tell me I can't do it and that will make me do it, right? Because they don't like being told they can't do something. But again, whichever way it is, it determines the outcome, All right? So here's a tip, and this is where we get nervous. You gotta learn to fail forward. Not everything you do will work and that's okay, okay? And you've got to be not afraid to fail. I like the story, you're an oyster farmer, some shells are empty, some have shiny pearls in them and some are covered in moss and mud and you just have to clean them up before they become a pearl, All right? You don't know until you find them. If you say the wrong thing to somebody, you apologize and you move on and you get on with it. Okay. You never know if you're going to fail in this business if you never try. And if you let the fear of failure stop you, you will never do it. Your intentions are good. Would you agree? When you go out yeah. and talk to somebody about the product, you want them to have the results that they're looking for. You want them to feel the things that it did for you. OK, so at the beginning, your intentions are good. If you ask the questions and if you listen to them, you're not going to fail. 
You won't please all the people all the time. That's not possible. And you might die trying. But the reality is, if you let the fear of failure get in your way, you will never move forward. I like this. This When I saw this the first time, this really appealed to me. If you can't read it, Michael Jordan says he's missed more than 9,000 shots in his career. He's lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the winning shot and missed. I failed over and over and over again in my life. And that's why I succeeded. Okay. And there's a whole Netflix series on this guy. And he sold probably more sneakers than you can shake a stick at as well outside of it. But again, if you let the failure define you, you'll never do anything. But if you let the fear of failure stop you, you're never going to get into action. So it does come down to belief. You gotta believe in yourself. You gotta believe in you the most. You gotta believe in the industry, in the company, in the product, and in the system. And it is that simple. Again, this ain't rocket science. How many of you would say, I've heard a lot of this before, but how many of you are still a little bit stuck and not moving forward? Absolutely. You're here tonight because you want to move forward. Okay, you're here tonight because you want to move forward. So that's literally what you need to stick on to. So stop and ask yourself for a second. Now, these are some things that may never matter to you. If money was no obstacle, what would you want your life to look like? I like the one at the bottom. Who would you help? You know, if you're not familiar with Robin and Kaina, they do so much good work in their community, like so many others do. You do, you know. I always think of Mary Jo Hilliker when she came and did a, a presentation here, and somebody stopped her dead in her tracks in Melbourne and said, "Well, you're all about the money," and the whole room went, <gasps> and she said, "I have a dream to build churches in Brazil, and this money allows me to do that." So if money was no obstacle, what would you do? Who could you impact? What would your life look like? When we come back to the question, who'd like more money? Drew, put your hand down. You're good. I want you to think about it, okay? All of this is in you. This is all to do with you. I think Diana's laughing knowing that Drew's never getting a pay rise after his hand went up. Okay, so call to action. We're going to keep it close, short tonight. Call to action. I want you to review the session. Drew will get the recording up probably on the 12th of never. Pick out three key learnings from this, whether you've heard it before, that's going to drive you forward. Lists, 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 and make some phone calls. So when you make a list, reach out and talk to people, follow up, make appointments, catch up for coffee. Personalize it again. Scripts are great, but what makes a script better is when somebody smart realizes I don't repeat it word for word. I make it sound like me and I connect and resonate with somebody. So don't cookie cutter. 